God can do for you more than you think. That is my message this hour. That God can do for you more than you think. What are you thinking about yourself? Do you think good about yourself? Do you think awareness about yourself? Do you think defeated about yourself? Do you think to glorify God? Do you think that God is helping you? Do you think that you are frustrated in life? God can do for you more than you think for yourself. Our text is taken from the book of Ephesians 3 verse 20. I read, Now unto him that is able to do a city abundantly, above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. God can do for you more than you think. Let's pray. Father, I demand this hour that you glorify your name. Let this message transform every centurial mind. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Where we took our text from, we said God can do a CD abundantly above all that we ever ask or think according to the power that work in us. How do you think God can do for you more than you think? Please don't think defeated. Don't think that you cannot be successful. Think that you'll be successful in life. Don't think that you are going to die poor. Think that you can be rich. Don't think that you cannot be saved as a Christian. Think that you will make heaven and walk towards it. Jesus Christ says in John chapter 9 verse 4, He said, I must do the work of him that sent me while it is day. I must walk the work of him that sent me while it is day. For the night cometh when no man can walk. Jesus Christ was thinking about his father's work. He was thinking about good things. He didn't think defeated. He never sat down to say, oh, you know, the Jews are accusing me. He never sat down to defeat himself. He was thinking of the next business to do. He was rejected in Bethlehem. But he did not stop to go to Nazareth. He became Jesus of Nazareth. I don't know where you are rejected. And you are taken frustrated. And you are taken defeated. And you are taken so bad. Battered. And confused in life. Don't think confusion. Don't think hatred. Don't think defeated. Don't think frustrations. Don't think battered and scattered in life. God, think more for you how you are thinking about that. Our topic says, God can do for you more than you think. So, Jesus Christ said, I must do the work of it that sent me. Why this day? For the night come when no man can walk. Jesus Christ was thinking about his father's work. What are you thinking about? What's your next work in life? You tried yesterday's work, you failed. No, get up. You can do greater than, than that. And you can do better than that. I wish you well, everyone, that you are going to be successful. You try before you fail, or you never try before. Don't be afraid to try. Try again. Try more. You will get excellency. This time, you will make it. You might have been defeated and frustrated before, but God is going to raise you up. The Bible says in Ephesians 3, verse 20, Unto the Lord that is able to do a CD abundantly, above all that we ever ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. There is a power in you that worketh good things. There is a power that worketh good virtue. There is a power that worketh success. Hold on to that power. And that power, is the confidence is in you, in Christ. Have confidence on yourself. Have confidence in Christ. The Bible says, John 5 verse 14. And this is the confidence that we have in Christ Jesus. Now we're asking for anything. He heareth us. He heareth us. Have confidence. The Bible says, the book of Hebrews 10 35. It said, cast not away your confidence. Which are great copies of reward. Your confidence. Do not cast it away. Have confidence in yourself, number one. Then number two, have confidence in God. Number three, have confidence that there is a success coming your way. 
Amen, somebody. Please don't think sickness that you will soon die in sickness. Don't think frustration that you are going to forsake your life. No, don't think failure. Think success. Don't think death. Think life. Don't think failure. Think excellency. I believe God will raise you up again. You might have fallen, God, but God will raise you up again. If you hear me, shout hallelujah. The Bible says, book of Philippians 4 and verse 8. The Bible says, finally, brethren, is there anything of good report? Is there anything pure? Is there anything that is honest? Is there anything that is lovely? Oh my God. Are there things that are pure? Are there things that are true? Are there things that are good? He said, is there, is, did there be any virtue, my God? He said, think of these things. He said, think of these things. Is there anything of good va va value? He said, think of these things. He summarized everything. He said, think of these things. Somebody came and was talking. He said, he, he will soon die. When you see, he said, maybe he will soon die. He said, maybe he will soon die. And really, not quite long, he died. I said, people say, oh, he has been saying that he will die. Maybe that is why he died now. You will not die. Psalm 18, verse 17. He said, I shall not die, but I will live to declare the words of the Lord. Listen, gentlemen, I said, you will not die. You will live to pronounce the good news. The Bible says, for Luke 21, verse 13. He says, it shall be to you for a testimony. I said, you will testify. I said, you will testify of the goodness of God. He says, it shall be to you for a testimony that God is transforming your life around. God wants to do something for you. God can do for you more than you think. He can do for you more than you think. He can do for you more than you think. Be careful about what you think. The Bible is called Proverbs 23, verse 7. It says, As a man taken in his heart, so is he. As a man taken in his heart, so that is how you become. As a man, what do you think in your heart? Are you thinking good things concerning your sister? Are you thinking good things concerning your brother? Are you thinking good things concerning your wife? Are you thinking good things concerning your husband? Are you thinking good things concerning your children? What do you think concerning your parents? What do you think concerning your siblings? What do you think concerning everyone around you? As a man ticket in his heart, so is he. I think about myself that I am successful. I think about myself that I will fulfill God's call in my life. I think about myself that whatever I lay my hands to do, I shall prosper. Think about those things. I think about myself that people love me so much. <laughs> Amen, somebody. I think about myself that anywhere I go, that I am favored, my God. Psalm 2 verse 13. He said, God that decided to bless me. The God that decided to favor me. And the set time to favor me is now. So I go with that notion that I'm favored. Amen. I look when I was growing up, I have the notion that they love me, that my parents love me more than every other of my siblings. I thought about that, and that was I believe. And anywhere I go, I still believe it that people appreciate me. People love me. I don't see people that we, that hate me. I see people that they love me. And I'm looking for who to love. If you hear me shout hallelujah. I said, man, taking his heart, so easy. I think my, my somebody told me some time ago in a church. The woman was teaching a Sunday school. He said, I love Pastor Innocent Jackson, how he behaved. Why? He said, when he's walking, he put his leg on the ground. Boah, boah. He's not afraid. I like the way he matches the ground. He's not afraid. He walks with confidence. My God. How confident are you? Do you have confidence in God? Are you afraid in this world that certain devil is after you? Are you afraid in this world that you will soon die? No. Don't be afraid of them. The Bible spoke of Jeremiah chapter 1. God told Jeremiah, he said, don't be afraid of their faces. Don't be afraid at all. Because I've given you power to put them down. Power to set the bone serpent and scorpions. Jesus Christ said, Labanto loko Don't be afraid of who can kill your flesh. Be afraid of those who can kill your flesh and kill your spirit. Who can do that? That is almighty. That's who we fear. Proverbs 9 verse 10 said, The fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. The Bible is called Psalm 111 verse 10 said, The fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. So when you fear God, you have confidence, you will succeed. You will not fail. God will take it to a higher pinnacle of success, of glory. What do you think about yourself? 
as I am talking now and I'm preaching to you, teaching the word of life now, some people are looking at this some, somehow. You know, what is this man talking about? What are you talking about? It's like a foolish word to you. The Bible says, Proverbs chapter 24, verse 7. It says, Wisdom is too high for a fool. I repeat, Wisdom is too high for a fool. Proverbs 24, verse 7. It says, Wisdom is too high for a fool. I don't know who I'm talking to tonight. Is the word too high for you? It becomes foolish for you? It's too high? It's, it's too high for a fool. Wisdom is too high for a fool. And the Bible says, Proverbs 23 and verse 9. He says, speak not in the ears of fools, for he will not value your word. He <laughs> says, speak not in the ears of a fool, he will not value your word. I pray tonight that you'll be wise as serpent and harmless as a dove to value the word of God tonight that God can do for you more than you think. You are a successful person. Don't think poor, think rich. Don't think sickness, think good health. Don't think, you know, failure, think excellency. Don't think frustrated, think, you know, energetic. You know, the exuberancy of your faith should, have, should, should be able to affect your neighbors, to grow. Let your life affect your generation. Let your life affect your family. Anywhere you go, be the top class of that situation. Be the top class, the top class of that, of that environment. Don't talk yourself down. If I talk now, they will not believe, they will believe you. Keep repeating what you know is true. Amen. He said, things that are pure, things that are honest. Think about those things that are pure. What do you think about? Do you think about things that are honest and pure? What do you think about? Things that are failure, things that are successful. Think about good things. And the Lord will help you. I pray tonight. The Bible says Romans 1 verse 21. He said, they refuse to glorify God. And they were taking vain in their mind. So they neglect the word of God and abandon God. Ladies and gentlemen, if you want to succeed in life, take God as number one. Take God as number one. If you neglect God, you may die frustrated. You may die like Saul. You may die like, you know, Judah is carrot. Judah is carrot thought he was smart. He neglected Jesus Christ. He went to betray him. Never know the value. Amen. You never know the value. He betrayed him. How did he die? He hung himself. Remember, you know, in the, 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 remember Saul, how Saul died for Sister with his son Jonathan in the war from because they neglected the principle of God, neglected the, 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 the commandment of God. I pray tonight, my God, that God will do for you more than you are taking for yourself. Are you thinking about by yourself you will succeed? You only buy just one car and build one house. That's what your vision. You just go to work and work with that somebody and you will not be a director never. No. Think great. Go to more schools. Be more educated. Be more successful. Think about greater things in life to do. Amen. You can get more than what you ever have. You can possess those things that God has given to you. Amen. Because God said we should think greater things. God said we should think high. God said we should think we are the children of God. We are, Bible said that God has given you the things of this world to enjoy before you go to heaven. You are, don't sound defeated. Don't sound frustrated. God is your father. Our God is a successful God. I said your God is a successful God. Our God is a successful God. He will lead you through. If you hear me say amen. I say, if you hear me say amen. I say, if you hear me, when I go to a place, I don't look at myself frustrated. I don't look at myself dejected. As I enter Spain here, yeah, I think success. I think progress. Amen. Hallelujah. I will round up with this one. You know, there was a time, you know, by the grace of God, I'm a minister of the gospel here, yeah, in where I live here in Spain. And not quite long, I received a call from the police officers. They called me, said, he said, he said, uh, we are policemen. We are calling you come to our office. Because whatever you are, you have to report yourself. I checked my record, I checked everything, I did not do evil things. So on the day I we, I said, where? So so place. And I went there. And I went to the place. And police showed me, he said, Yes, you are a pastor. I said, Yes, I'm a pastor. He said, You preach sometime, you preach sometime there. He said, I said, Yes. He said, Do you need do you know so so place? So, so place, I say, I know so place in our area there. 
He said, okay, we, are you aware that the, they fought in that place and somebody took bottle and forgot bottle in somebody's stomach and the person died? I said, I don't know about that. I said, I always, like you said, I face my evangelical work. Evangelism work, that's what I do. I preach the gospel, I go from place to place, go for visitation and preach in the church of God. Our church is born again, Christian church, international. And the man looked at me. He said, we know you quite all right. Is, is, there you are, you are in Songo level, like that place where, where you are staying with your church. You are, you, this is the place of your church. I said, Yes. It's okay. He said, You will help us to do something. We are going to make you, you know, police informant. We are going to be paying you. Anytime you need our system, come to us. We shall pay you. And we will make you informant. Any people that are doing good or doing bad, come and report to us in the station. I said, Well, <laughs> with all due respect, police officers. I am not an evangelist of police informant. I am an evangelist of God. And I will preach the gospel. Because the Bible says, And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness of all nations. You have heard it. You have heard the word of God. So that's what I preach. The gospel of Jesus Christ. I can't do that work for you. I can't do information for you. I can't send my brother. I can't send my sister to you. I am more than that. You know me. I can't be a police informant. No. And I said, okay, well, this is my number. In case you need our assistance, you know, we can help you or some other area. I said, thank you very much. I took my Bibles, I took my bag, and I left there with boldness. Why? Because I have no cockroach in my cupboard. As I was talking, I was talking well. And today they respect me. So what am I saying tonight? End your respect with your dignity. In God's word, only God's word that can set you free. The word of God. They are spirit and life. The Bible, simple, you know, Psalm 1989. He said, Forever the word of God is set to the heaven concerning your life, that you are successful, that you are a glorious child of God, that you are powerful, too much to be laid down. They look for me. We know this is you, you are a pastor. Come and be, if I'm, you know, I say, I can't do that work for you. I can only preach the gospel <laughs> I, I, with dignity. Labado, <laughs> Rabadaba. Who are you? Do you sound defeated? Do you appear sick? Do you tell negative about yourself? You say you are going to be poor for life? You say you have a bad head? No. I know I'm favored. Anywhere you go, say, I know I am favored. And print yourself. Tell them this how to do that thing. And read more books. You know, you know, update, upgrade yourself. So that when you go out, people will listen to you. People will hear you out. Because out of the volume of what you study last, that is what you will speak out. Amen. People will respect your volume of words because you speak well, because you have read, because you have studied. You may, if you don't study, you will appear a mediocre. I pray tonight for you. God will give you excellency. Receive your freedom. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.